911, what's your emergency? The operator's voice was calm, a stark contrast to the chaos that was unfolding. I, I think something terrible has happened. A woman's voice, thick with terror, choked out. Ma'am, please state your address and try to stay calm. What exactly is happening? It's Mrs. Henderson from next door. I heard her scream, a horrible blood-curdling scream, and then everything went silent. I, I think something's wrong, terribly wrong. The operator's voice turned sharper, more urgent. Ma'am, we're sending someone over right now. Stay on the line and tell me, have you seen anyone suspicious around Mrs. Henderson's house? The flashing red and blue lights of the patrol car sliced through the quiet suburban street, shattering the peace of the night. The once serene neighborhood was now bathed in an eerie glow, the lights reflecting off the windows of the houses, casting long dancing shadows on the pavement. Officer Johnson, a seasoned cop with a gut feeling that rarely steered him wrong, jumped out of the car before it had even come to a complete stop. His years on the force had taught him to trust his instincts, and tonight they were screaming at him that something was terribly amiss. His partner, the rookie officer Davis, hurried after him, his face pale beneath the flashing lights. Davis had only been on the job for a few months, and the gravity of the situation was starting to weigh heavily on him. The adrenaline coursing through his veins was a stark contrast to the fear gnawing at his gut. This was his first potential homicide, and the reality of the job was starting to sink in. The training at the academy had not fully prepared him for the raw, visceral experience of a real crime scene. The air was thick with tension, and every sound seemed amplified in the stillness of the night. Evening, ma'am. You the one who called it in? Johnson's voice cut through the silence, firm yet reassuring, as he approached the woman standing on her porch. Her face was ghostly white in the moonlight, her eyes wide with fear and shock. Johnson's voice was firm yet reassuring as he approached the woman standing on her porch, her face ghostly white in the moonlight. He could see the terror in her eyes, the way her hands trembled as she clutched her robe tightly around her. Yes, officer, it's just... it's just awful, the woman stammered, pointing a shaky finger towards the house next door. Her voice was barely above a whisper, and Johnson had to lean in to catch her words. The fear in her voice was palpable, and it sent a chill down his spine. I haven't seen or heard anything since that scream. It's like, like everything just went silent. The woman's words hung in the air, heavy with dread. Johnson could feel the weight of the situation pressing down on him, the sense of urgency growing with each passing second. Johnson, sensing something was very wrong, exchanged a grim look with Davis. The rookie's eyes were wide with fear, but there was also a steely determination there. They both knew that they had to act quickly, that every second counted. Stay here and take the witness statement. I'm going in, he ordered, his hand instinctively resting on his holster as he approached the house. The sense of urgency was palpable and Johnson's heart pounded in his chest as he prepared to enter the unknown. The night was far from over and the real work was just beginning. The front door creaked open with a groan, the lock clearly tampered with. A wave of stale air, heavy with the metallic scent of blood, washed over Johnson as he stepped inside. His hand tightened on his flashlight, its beam cutting through the darkness, illuminating dust motes dancing in the air. The house was eerily silent, the only sound Johnson's own heartbeat pounding in his ears. Mrs. Henderson, police! If you're here, please make yourself known. Johnson's voice echoed through the empty house unanswered. He moved cautiously through the living room, his eyes scanning every shadowy corner. The furniture was overturned, lamps smashed, the room in a state of disarray that spoke of a struggle, a desperate fight for life. As Johnson rounded the corner into the hallway, his flashlight beam landed on a sight that made his stomach clench. Lying in a pool of her own blood, her eyes staring blankly at the ceiling, was Mrs. Henderson. She was gone. Her name was Eleanor Henderson. 
a widow in her late sixties, known for her kindness and her love for her garden. Everyone on the street knew her, chatted with her over fences, borrowed her gardening tools. Now she lay lifeless on her living room floor, a victim of a brutality that seemed at odds with the quiet, peaceful neighborhood. The forensics team swarmed the house, their movements practiced and efficient as they documented the scene. Every footprint, every fingerprint, every stray fiber could be a clue, a breadcrumb leading to the monster who had done this. The medical examiner, a stoic man with eyes that had seen too much, carefully examined the body. The cause of death was evident, multiple stab wounds to the chest, delivered with a ferocity that spoke volumes about the killer's rage. As the initial shock wore off, a chilling question settled over the investigation. Who could possibly want to harm a woman like Eleanor Henderson? The news of Eleanor Henderson's murder spread through the community like wildfire, leaving behind a trail of shock and disbelief. It was as if a dark cloud had descended upon the neighborhood, casting a shadow over the once serene and friendly streets. The quiet suburban street, once a haven of peace and security, was now shrouded in fear. The familiar sounds of children playing and neighbors chatting were replaced by an eerie silence broken only by the occasional siren or the murmur of worried conversations. Neighbors gathered on front lawns, their faces etched with worry and suspicion, exchanging hushed whispers and nervous glances. The sense of community that had once been their strength now seemed fragile, as if it could shatter at any moment under the weight of their collective anxiety. Everyone had a theory, a suspicion, a fear that the killer might be someone they knew, someone lurking in the shadows of their seemingly idyllic lives. Theories ranged from the plausible to the absurd, each one adding to the growing sense of paranoia. I always thought that new guy across the street was a bit strange, whispered Mrs. Jenkins, her voice trembling as she clutched her cardigan tighter. Her words echoed the unspoken fears of many, who now looked at their neighbors with a mix of fear and suspicion. Keeps to himself, never talks to anyone. The man in question had always been a bit of a loner, but now his solitude seemed sinister, a potential sign of guilt in the eyes of the frightened community. You never know with people these days. The sense of unease was palpable as if the very air was thick with suspicion and fear. Don't be ridiculous, Ethel, chided Mr. Thompson, his voice gruff but his eyes darting nervously around. It could be anyone, a stranger passing through. His attempt to calm the group only highlighted his own unease, as if he too was grappling with the terrifying possibility that the killer was among them. We can't just start pointing fingers at each other. But the words felt hollow, a desperate attempt to cling to the remnants of their shattered trust. But despite his words, a seed of doubt had been sown. The once solid foundation of their community was now riddled with cracks, each one a testament to the growing mistrust and fear. The once unthinkable thought that the killer might be one of their own took root in their minds, poisoning the well of trust that had bound their community together. The bonds that had once united them now seemed fragile, as if they could be severed at any moment by the sharp edge of suspicion. Days turned into nights as the investigation continued, the pressure mounting with each passing hour. The detectives, fueled by coffee and determination, worked tirelessly, sifting through mountains of evidence and re-interviewing witnesses, hoping to find the one clue that would break the case wide open. The police followed every lead, every whisper, every hunch, desperate for a break in the case. They canvassed neighborhoods, knocked on countless doors and pieced together the victim's last moments trying to reconstruct the events leading up to the crime. Then, a breakthrough. A fingerprint lifted from the murder weapon, a blood-stained kitchen knife found discarded in the victim's garden came back with a match. This was the moment they had been waiting for. 
a piece of evidence that could finally point them in the right direction. The suspect was not a stranger, not a shadowy figure lurking in the night, but someone Eleanor Henderson knew, someone she had trusted. The revelation was a gut punch, leaving her reeling and questioning everything she thought she knew about the people in her life. His name was David Miller, the seemingly harmless young man who lived across the street. He had always been polite, always kept to himself, and never gave anyone a reason to suspect him of anything sinister. The news of David's arrest sent shockwaves through the community. Neighbors who had known him for years were in disbelief, struggling to reconcile the image of the quiet young man they thought they knew with the horrific crime he was accused of committing. He was a quiet, unassuming young man who kept to himself. He rarely interacted with others, preferring the solitude of his home. To many, he was just another face in the neighborhood, someone who blended into the background. No one could believe that he was capable of such a heinous act. The community was left grappling with the reality that a monster had been living among them, hidden in plain sight. And yet the evidence was irrefutable. The forensic team meticulously analyzed every piece of evidence, ensuring that there was no room for doubt. The fingerprint on the knife, the bloodstains and the timeline all pointed to David. As the pieces of the puzzle began to fall into place, a chilling picture emerged of a seemingly ordinary young man harboring a dark secret. A secret that had festered and grown until it culminated in an unspeakable act of violence. A secret that would have terrifying consequences for everyone involved. The community would never be the same forever haunted by the knowledge that evil can lurk behind the most innocent of facades.